What if I told you that behind the closed doors of a seemingly normal suburban home, a young boy was enduring a nightmare so horrific that it defied belief? The case we're about to explore not only shocked the community, but also uncovered the dark side of a man who was supposed to be a protector. Welcome to our deep dive into the tragic case of Corey Michelow from Toms River, New Jersey. This story, filled with unimaginable cruelty and shocking twists, forces us to confront the darkest corners of human behavior. Today, we'll unravel the disturbing details of Corey's life, the harrowing events that led to his death, and the search for justice that followed. The illusion of a perfect life. Tom's River, New Jersey, a picturesque town known for its family-friendly atmosphere and close-knit community, was the backdrop for a case that would tear at its very fabric. For most, Tom's River represents the quintessential American town, with tree-lined streets, friendly neighbors, and a sense of safety. But behind this facade, a tragedy was unfolding that would soon shake the community to its core. Corey Michelow was a six-year-old boy with a bright future ahead of him. His life, however, was a stark contrast to the idyllic setting of Tom's River. Christopher Greger was 22 years old when Michelow, his girlfriend, gave birth to Corey. She was 17 years old. Greger asked the court for joint custody, and she ended up raising Corey alone for his first five years until she and Greger shared custody. Christopher Greger, a man who presented himself as a devoted parent to the outside world. A 32-year-old with a seemingly stable job and a reputation as a loving father, hit a dark side that would soon come to light. For Christopher, the home that was supposed to be a sanctuary became a place of unimaginable torment. We've reached the stage when things start to become unbearable. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share the video so you can discover more of our true crime stories. The unfolding horror. It started subtly, as many cases of abuse do. Christopher Greger's behavior towards his son was marked by a pattern of increasing severity. At first, the punishment seemed to be standard disciplinary measures. But as time went on, these punishments escalated into something far more sinister. The treadmill in the Greger's complex, a common piece of exercise equipment, became an instrument of torture. Christopher used it not as a means to promote health, but as a tool for cruelty. What began as routine punishment turned into a systematic method of abuse. Witnesses later revealed that Corey was subjected to extreme physical punishment, forced to run on the treadmill at increasingly high speeds. Each time he faltered or showed signs of exhaustion, Christopher would escalate the punishment, turning what should have been a simple exercise routine into a grueling test of endurance. The treadmill was set to a pace and incline that left Corey struggling to keep up, his small body pushed to its limits. The fatal incident. The turning point came one fateful day in August. Corey, enraged by what he perceived as Corey's disobedience, subjected him to an extended session on the treadmill. This time, the abuse reached a new level of brutality. Christopher increased the treadmill's speed and incline to an extreme degree, showing no regard for the physical toll it was taking on his son. Corey, already weakened by previous sessions, collapsed from exhaustion and injury. The situation quickly deteriorated as Christopher's rage blinded him to the dire condition his son was in. When emergency services were finally called, a report was filled for child abuse and neglect. After his kid woke up from a sleep stumbling, slurring his speech, suffering nausea, and shortness of breath, Gregor took him to the hospital two weeks later, on April 2nd after the first incident which was on the treadmill. Corey started experiencing seizures while undergoing the CT scan. Corey was not saved despite efforts to save his life. After conducting an autopsy on Corey's body on April 3rd, Dr. Dante Ragusa, a medical examiner from Ocean County, made the following determination on the cause of death, cardiac and liver contusions caused by blunt force trauma, together with severe inflammation and infection. But the cause of death was left undetermined by him. He did not rule on it. A consulting forensic pathologist examined the case in September 2021 and finally concluded that the cause of death was murder. Corey, according to Dr. Thomas Andrew, had a severe heart attack 4 to 12 hours before to his passing. Dr. Andrew discovered injuries consistent with long-term maltreatment, such as laceration of the heart, left pulmonary contusion, laceration and contusion of the liver, and blunt force trauma to the belly and chest. 
two separate instances gave rise to distinct charges against Greger. The event with the treadmill, which led to the first count of child endangerment charges, took place on March 20, 2021. There was no treadmill involved in Corey's death from blunt force trauma on April 2, 2021, count two. According to the indictment, Greger knowingly caused serious bodily injury that led to the death of another. This means that he was responsible for Corey's death. The investigation begins. What should have been a straightforward case of an accident quickly revealed itself to be far more complex. Christopher's initial account of the incident, claiming Corey had fallen off the treadmill and injured himself, didn't align with the physical evidence. Investigators began to piece together the disturbing reality of the situation. Forensic experts and detectives scrutinized the evidence, including the condition of the treadmill and the injuries on Corey's body. Their findings painted a grim picture of prolonged abuse rather than a sudden, isolated incident. Christopher's story started to unravel under the weight of forensic evidence and witness testimonies. The investigation revealed a pattern of escalating violence. Neighbors, teachers, and even friends of the family came forward, describing Corey's physical and emotional distress. Teachers noted signs of fear and sadness in Corey, and neighbors recalled hearing arguments and witnessing suspicious behavior. One of the most damning pieces of evidence was the surveillance footage from a nearby camera. The footage captured moments when Corey was on the treadmill, providing a visual record of the abuse he endured. This footage, combined with the testimony of experts who detailed the severity of Corey's injuries, built a compelling case against Christopher Greger. The trial. As the case moved to court, the drama unfolded with intense scrutiny. Christopher faced charges of first-degree murder and multiple counts of child abuse. The prosecution's case was built on the overwhelming evidence of deliberate cruelty and a pattern of abuse. They portrayed Christopher as a man who had systematically tortured his son, culminating in a brutal act that led to Christopher's death. The defense, however, sought to present a different narrative. They argued that Christopher's actions were not premeditated, but were the result of a moment of rage and poor judgment. They portrayed him as a father under extreme stress, hoping to mitigate the severity of the charges. In the courtroom, emotions ran high. Corey's family and friends provided heart-wrenching testimonies about the vibrant boy they knew and the pain of losing him. They described the profound impact of his death on their lives and the community. Expert witnesses provided detailed explanations of the physical evidence, illustrating the extent of the abuse and its fatal consequences. Their testimonies underscored the brutality of Christopher's actions and the deliberate nature of the abuse. The verdict and sentencing. After weeks of tense deliberation, the jury reached a verdict. Christopher Greger was found guilty of first-degree murder and multiple counts of child abuse. The verdict brought a sense of relief and justice, but it could not erase the deep scars left by the tragedy. During sentencing, the courtroom was filled with raw emotion. Christopher Greger was sentenced to 25 years in state prison by Judge Guy Ryan. The judge's decision reflected the severity of the crime and the need for a punishment that matched the gravity of Christopher Greger actions. The sentencing marked the end of a legal process, but the beginning of a long journey toward healing for Christopher's family and the Toms River community. The case served as a stark reminder of the importance of vigilance in recognizing and addressing signs of abuse. The broader impact. The Corey Michelow case sparked important conversations about child abuse and the responsibilities of those who suspect or witness such behavior. It highlighted the need for increased awareness and the importance of taking action when abuse is suspected. Community organizations and advocacy groups used the case as a catalyst to push for better support systems for children and more stringent measures to prevent abuse. The case also prompted discussions about the role of the legal system in ensuring that justice is served and that those who commit such heinous acts are held accountable. The emotional aftermath. In the wake of Christopher Greger's conviction, the community of Tom's River was left grappling with profound grief and anger. The case had revealed a darkness that seemed incongruent with the town's image as a safe and supportive environment. Families, friends, and neighbors came together, trying to process the shock and find solace in the wake of Corey's tragic death. And if true crime keeps you hooked, Subscribe and turn on notifications so you're the first to know when we drop our next case. Corey's family, particularly his extended relatives and friends, 
were left to cope with the loss of a young boy whose potential had been cruelly cut short. The emotional toll was immense. Many struggled with feelings of guilt and helplessness, questioning how they might have intervened to prevent such a tragedy. Grieving for Corey became a collective endeavor, with memorials and services held to honor his memory and bring some measure of closure to a community in mourning. The Legal and Social Impact Advocacy groups used the case to push for reforms aimed at improving the identification and reporting of child abuse. They advocated for better training for educators, healthcare professionals, and law enforcement to recognize and act upon signs of abuse more effectively. The case also sparked a debate about the role of social services in intervening earlier in cases where children are at risk. In response to the case, several new initiatives were launched. Educational programs for parents and caregivers were developed, focusing on nonviolent discipline techniques and the psychological impact of abuse. Additionally, increased funding was allocated to support services for children and families, with the goal of preventing future tragedies and providing help to those in need. The Psychological Impact The psychological effects of the Christopher Greger case extended beyond the immediate family and community. Mental health professionals noted an increase in anxiety and trauma-related symptoms among those who had followed the case closely or had been involved in the legal proceedings. This case served as a stark reminder of the potential psychological damage inflicted by abuse, both on the victims and those who learn about such horrific acts. Support groups and counseling services were established to help individuals process their feelings and cope with the trauma triggered by the case. These resources aim to provide a safe space for people to express their emotions and seek support in dealing with the aftermath of such a disturbing story. The Final Reflection As we reflect on the story of Christopher Greger, we must remember that behind every headline and courtroom drama is a real person whose life has been profoundly impacted by the actions of others. Christopher's case is a poignant reminder of the need for vigilance, empathy, and action in the face of child abuse. With that said, thanks for watching, and until next time.